Well, hello again. There is a YouTube video out there that was done seven years ago by YouTuber DRH4683. That's him right there. Uh, very, very good television tech. And he has a deep respect for what used to be, you know, the United States electronics industry that dominated the world. And, of course, he's like the rest of us. He still kind of mourns that passing, which seems to be deliberate if you study deep enough. Uh, but anyway, he did a video, and it's called the, fi the Final Days of the Former Motorola Headquarters and Assembly Plant in Franklin Park, Illinois. And I'll tell you what, I don't know how I ever missed this video. I happened to cross it, and there's a reason. And uh, this is the headquarters itself, and to the rear, starting back in this area here, in back of this building, you'll, you'll see it here. Let me see if I can get it to move a little bit. Uh, all the way to the rear, this is in the... the foreground uh, is the building for the former Motorola corporate headquarters. I'll just go ahead and quiet down. Now there, that brown building back there, that's the assembly plant. This is where all the mucky mucks used to be. And that's where the, uh, you know, the, the, the workers used to, the worker bees used to be putting everything together. And apparently the CEO at the time, they built this building and everything. Uh, he, he thought he was pretty hot shot. He used to arrive to work every day with a helicopter. They had a helicopter, a landing pad up on the roof. How arrogant can you get, huh? Anyway, if you have any interest at all in, you know, I'm not talking about deep-seated study of the electronics industry in America, no, but if you have any interest to know the story behind how some large companies uh, collapsed, absolutely, actually pretty rapidly, Zenith and RCA and Motorola and uh, how they were taken over, essentially, this is a very good video he did an excellent job so if you have time someday now it is 58 minutes long you don't have to watch it all at once but i highly recommend it it's very entertaining for one thing like i said he did a very very good job he does a good job in all of his videos check out some of his tv repair videos he, he he's just he's just excellent <laughs> he does a lot of color tv repair and uh, he has a whole collection of them i guess down in his down in his basement <laughs> unbelievable so my recommendation check it out which brings us to our next project, which is a Motorola uh, CX20, CX28, 1W, which means white, I guess. And uh, this radio here, I showcased it in one of my mishmash videos a few years ago before I retired. And uh, it had just, I had just bought it on the internet. It came in. I was checking it out. I think I changed out a couple of capacitors. And uh, it was playing fine. And it's been sitting out in the shop. I had it up high on a shelf. I got it down the other day and decided to get it in the house and play it. It works. It still works, except it's got a rattle. It's got some kind of a rattle in the audio. So one of the transistors is bad, or a capacitor is broken down, or who knows what. The solder joint's gone. Maybe the speaker has a crack in it. Who knows? We're going to have to find out. But right right now, I got it apart to just check it out, see if there was any, anything obvious. But you'll see right now, look, look at all this. They, I don't know who put this gigantic heavy cord on this thing. That is not original, I don't think. And uh, look at all the flux they used to get that thing soldered in. That's terrible. That's the, so what we're going to do first before we do anything, we're going to clean all that flux off there. I don't know how I didn't do that last time. I, I, I must have missed it. That's not for me, believe me. And uh, we're going to go ahead and clean it all up and everything, put a brand new power cord on it. Well, that's a little better. Boy, what a mess, huh? And while that's drying, uh, I'll show you. You know, you always prepare to get the paperwork and everything before you start on any radio, if possible. Just get whatever you can. Some of it's bad, but get it anyway. You, get, you never know. It could save some at some point throughout the project. And uh, I got this one from Bob Dobush, the guy who sells the tubes. He also sells schematics. Keep that in mind. And he sent me the entire photo pack on it that he had. There is a uh, schematic that came with it. And, uh, and the parts list. 
And there's alignment instructions here somewhere. I don't know where they went. No, I, guess, I guess the alignment... Where is the alignment instructions? <laughs> I guess I gotta get that and print it out. I haven't done that yet. Oh well. Anyway, here's the uh, the bottom of the uh, circuit board. Tells you where everything's at. You gotta have your paperwork before you start. Oh, well, here we go. The alignment instructions right there. Something real quick, real easy. Nothing to it. Piece of cake. Anyway, we'll set that aside, and then I went ahead and scrubbed the entire thing. The heck with it. Let's get these things removed. All right, now we're cooking with gas. I decided to clean up the entire pad on both sides of the board. All this white stuff you see here is, I think this board has been coated with shellac. This will show what it looks like because the alcohol was removing it. You can see we removed it here and a few other places. Alcohol removes shellac, so I don't know. They probably use shellac as a, I don't know, a conformal coating. Conformal coating is what they use, uh, or at least they used to use, to coat all the all the circuit boards after the after the solder was done. Anyway, she's looking a whole lot better now. I'll go ahead and uh, get the electrical cord stripped down, see what I can do by getting a little power here to show you what I'm talking about. I just, uh, this is not going to be the permanent power cord. I just tacked it on. It's non-polarized, but I just tacked it on to where I could get some power. And I don't know if you can hear the rattle in that speaker or not. Anyway, the clock works, everything works on it. It's just got that rattly sound. Did you hear that? More thunderstorms. Oh, God. See that little silver can down there? That is what one of the transistors look like. That's the old-fashioned metal can transistors. Inside those things is mostly air with a couple of little blobs of negative and positively charged type material. And uh, nowadays we have transistors that are about, you know, about, what, one-tenth the size of those or even smaller on circuit boards. They can put a I think they can put like a, a million or a billion of those things on a little circuit board. It's incredible how far we've come since this radio was in, built. I think it was 1961. And a uh, radio just like this, same color and everything. I, I listened to the Beatles arrive in New York City for the very first time. I was sitting at home listening on my radio. Now, that was a big deal in those days. All right, let's take a look at what the output power transistor looks like. Now here's a menagerie of uh, transistors that came down through the years. This is the power transistor. Look at the size of this big metal thing. This is a heat sink. This has to be mounted to a heat sink with an insulator between them because this is a collector. Same thing probably with this one here. They don't have anything labeled on but this is the one we'll be dealing with. This style right here. Look, look at that. That's a transistor right there. That's one right there. This is the more modern kind. Incredible, isn't it? Now here's another photograph of a uh, semiconductor, they call it, which is an output power transistor. You'll notice there's two leads coming out of the bottom. One is the emitter, one is the base, and the metal case is the collector. These transistors, all they all have three leads. One is the base, which is equal to the control grid on a tube think of it that way, it does control the flow of electrons through the tube. This is the emitter, which is the base, equivalent to the base in a, in a vacuum tube. And of course the collector is what? Well, if you got the base and the emitter and the collector, control grid, cathode, what's left? The plate, the plate. This is equal to the plate, okay? So we'll be taking our measurements. If we're going to start out down here on uh, X5. As you notice how I have everything highlighted so it's easy to find in a hurry. Sometimes these schematics are so busy it takes you an hour and a half to figure out well, where, where was that trans transistor at? <laughs> this here is the collector. Feeds directly into the audio output transformer, uh, which... No, is that the audio output transformer? Yes, that's the speaker. Right there. See, I didn't even hardly recognize that as the speaker. That's the speaker symbol on these things. So it feeds into the audio output transformer and then on out through the speaker. So we know we're getting garble out of the speaker. We're gonna test here. It might be this one right here. 
And I'm going, where am I going to test? I'm going to put the lead. I'm going to put my, I'm going to put my signal tracer lead right there. And where is the C located? Well, this right here shows you. This is it. This is your terminal guide for your X5. Your collector is the metal part of the large transistor. So all I got to do is take this and touch anywhere on the metal. Now in this radio, they're using this metal plate as a heat sink. It's, uh, it has other functions as well, but it was a smart move on their part. Why not use that as a heat sink? And these are the two leads coming off of that power transistor, right there and right there. And underneath it is the silver part underneath this right here. All right, see that silver? There's our two leads coming out of the top of that gold metal. See that silver thing down there? That is the rest of the transistor. That's that big metal part. That's the collector. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide this little baby right down through here. And we're going to touch it against that collector. Okay? All righty, here we go. Well, I don't know about you, but that does not sound garbled at all. With competitive rates, flexible terms, and Well, I'll tell you what, that does not sound garbled to me. How about you? Okay, I, I'm declaring that the, the thing was not garbled. Didn't sound garbled to me. Of course, my hearing's not all that great anyway, but I, I think it sounded nice and clear. For being an old unit, you know, with a very tiny speaker, you have to take all that into consideration. All right, if it's if you got nice clear sound right here, it's got to be a problem with the audio output transformer. It's got to be a problem with the speaker itself. Maybe there's a crack in there. Maybe the uh, voice coil is dragging. I don't know. Maybe the ground is bad right here. We need to check this entire section out here. And then uh, make sure I'm getting negative 12.8 volts to one side of this... Uh, Audio output transformer. This the problem is right in here. Could be a solder joint. Could be dirty connections. Now this thing has been sitting around for a while. Any of these? Uh, let me get a focus here. Come here, you. Could be a little corrosion build up down here. I need these are uh, plug-in connectors right here. And oh, you know, I don't. Know, there's another one down in there. It's a plug-in connector. We can pull these off and give them a good scrub and give them a good clean. But I'm, I'm thinking that maybe the right voltage is not getting to here. And maybe these connectors here are dirty. I don't know. We shall see. Good cleaning coming up. Well, it sounds like there's been an improvement. and uh, But it's hard to tell with all the static in the air and everything from AM. And uh, what I'm going to do is take my transmitter and send a signal through from it. And we do have... 13.8 uh, volts instead of 12.8 for, you know, that's perfect because I don't know how accurate my meter is. But we have negative 12.13, uh, negative 13.8 volts on the uh, audio output transformer. So maybe it's fixed, I don't know. Well, that helped it a little bit. I touched up a bunch of solder joints as well. Still got a garble at certain places. It might be the buying control. I, sp I sprayed it out and cleaned it and all that stuff, but it's an old radio. It goes back to 1961, like I said. If I crank it up real loud. Well, I think it's either the volume control or the speaker. Well, I kept messing with it and messing with it a little bit longer. You know how I am. And I think I've about figured out what the problem is. It's the speaker itself. No, no more garble. I don't want to overdrive it worse than it is. Speaker's pretty weak. Sounds a whole lot better now, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Well, that's it. Until next time, this is John.